Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Mm. Chocolate. Hi there, Coach Sage Candy of SageRunning.com here with another training talk. Today we're going to talk about critical velocity training uh, made more popular recently by Tin Men, Coach Tin Men Schwartz, or Tom Schwartz is his name. Coach of Tin Men Elite uh, based in Boulder, Colorado, but also been on the Let's Run.com message boards. I've been reading about uh, CV training, critical velocity training, for over 15 years. Uh, and it originally came from, from swimming. But first, a commercial break. Uh, check out this cool coffee mug I got. Any surface, any distance. Hand drawn by Coach Sandy and I at Paver. Uh, Coach Sandy and I co-founded sagerunning.com. It's our business. We sell training plans there for any surface, any distance. She hand drew this design on a coffee mug. You get it in the link in the Teespring, Teespring link below this video. Uh, again, business plug for Coach Sandy and I. Uh, let's get back into the training talk now. They make great gifts for the holidays. Any surface, any distance, sage running. So like I said, I believe the term originated from critical value, CV, uh, from swimming uh, coaches and the idea of kind of doing cruise intervals, which is interesting because Jack Daniels in his original distance running formula, this is the original book, got this like 20 years ago, I read it, uh, edition one, Jack Daniels distance running formula. We talk about threshold training, lactate threshold, and we start talking about cruise interval workouts, which are basically things like kilometer repeats or mile repeats at uh, a, a high anaerobic effort uh, with a very short rest, like a one minute or you know five times a mile, uh, six to eight or even 10 times a kilometer with like a one minute rest, right? But it could be variations in doing timed interval fartlek, right? Three minute surges followed by a minute 30 steady running, right? Float recovery, things like that. And the exact values and numbers and paces we're getting at basically with critical velocity, in layman's terms, it would be, uh, and again, uh, Tinman made this popular. He's talking about this on the Let's Run message board forums and I was reading this 15 years ago. He was coaching Drew Hunter uh, in high school and now the Tinman Elite group out here in Boulder. A lot of success there. His idea of doing inner, these, these workouts around, uh, for an elite, around 12K race pace. It's kind of this arbitrary... Uh, velocity, right? What you would be able to hold in a 30, 35, maybe even a 40 minute type of race. So maybe for, for you, it's, it's around 10k race pace, right? Now, Daniels in his original edition, uh, has defined tempo threshold pace on the spectrum as being what you'd be able to hold for about an hour. So for an elite, that's close, pretty close to half marathon race pace. Uh, for you, it might be just a little slower than 10k race pace or 15k race pace, right? So that's lactate threshold. That's the threshold on the spectrum. And we'll pull up the Sage Running pace intensity spectrum. Free download at sagerunning.com where you could see uh, as we go up the more intense scale, we go from that lactate threshold or tempo or threshold training, whatever you want to call it, half marathon pace for me, maybe a little slower than 10k pace for you. Uh, or you might be faster than me, I don't know. Uh, it might be your 12k pace. And at the very high end of that, between the lactate threshold and true VO2 max, which uh, Daniels in his newer edition uh, would define, of course, as as closer to 5K pace, right? 3K to 5K pace is true VO2 max, maximum aerobic capacity. We have this kind of in-between gray area, and that's where CV kind of falls. I would still say it's it's closer to, to high-end lactate threshold training. It's at the high end of the spectrum. So this is a pace intensity spectrum. There really is no no man's land. Uh, if you're doing a CV workout though, and you run too fast, let's say you run 8K race pace, or you're running faster than your fitness uh, shows, like you say, oh, I'm, I'm in sub 35 minute 10K shape, I, I could you know do this workout faster than 10K pace, it kind of defeats the purpose of the workout. So if you're going too hard, developing too much lactic acid, you're getting, you're losing some of that benefit because your form's breaking down. Or you're starting to get into VO2 max territory, but it's not supposed to be a VO2 max type of workout. You got to save that for when you really want to peak. And the difference between a CV workout and a VO2 max workout would be, uh, say you were doing kilometer repeats. True VO2 max would be something like six times a kilometer at 5K, at current 5K pace, or maybe even slightly faster. And you take a longer rest in between. Maybe you take a two and a half minute rest in between these three minute kilometers uh, if you're a 15 minute type of 5K runner. Or even if you're running 330 repeats for a VO2 max kilometer repeat workout, you're taking a three minute rest. So you're taking a long rest because you're hitting these fast paces, faster than 5K pace. Whereas in a critical velocity workout, a CV workout, you would be running 
a higher volume usually, maybe you do eight times a kilometer, or like I do 10 times a kilometer, right, training for a marathon now, uh, and you have a much shorter rest, you only have a one minute rest for 10 times a K, but you're doing it slower than 10K pace. You're doing it just a little bit slower than 10K pace, it's faster than half marathon pace, slower than 10K pace. And so that's kind of the idea, and it'd be more of an early season or all season type of workout. You're not inducing too much uh, lactic acid into the system. You could still run pretty smooth. And what does this correspond with with uh, heart rate, maximum heart rate value, right? It's about 90% maximum heart rate. And we go back to, you know, Jack Daniels, this ring formula, the OG, original edition. Uh, you're looking at lactate threshold training, threshold training being maybe like a 30 minute, 25, 30 minute tempo run or an up-tempo run, as we call it, sage running. Again, back to that pace intensity spectrum. It's a spectrum, right? Uh, up-tempo running might be around marathon pace for me, maybe even a little slower. For you, it might be between half marathon and marathon pace. But during that course of that 30-minute threshold run, you have a negative split where you kind of speed up. And so at the end, maybe you're hitting critical velocity and your heart rate's spiking over 90% of maximum. You're hitting critical velocity. But when you started off the first couple kilometers or the first couple miles of the tempo, it almost felt too easy and you were going too slow. It felt like, you know, the start of a marathon or something like that. So those are kind of the fine details and variables that either make or break these types of workouts and kind of what defines what type of workout it is, what kind of system you're trying to train. And, you know, for, for uh, Tom Schwartz, Tinman, coaching a lot of the Tinman elite who run like the mile or the 5K, there's a lot of value in doing these mile repeats or even two kilometer repeats or kilometer repeats at 90% maximum heart rate, which is very close to about 90% of VO2 max, uh, to work on their the intermediate muscle fibers, the, the fast oxidative type of muscle fibers, giving fast twitch muscle fibers more slow twitch muscle fiber characteristics and giving them more uh, endurance properties, basically, building on kind of that strength endurance, uh, not breaking the athlete down by overtraining with too much uh, acidosis, too much high lactate. They do a lot of speed work, don't get me wrong. If you're training for world-class you know, miles, you gotta do some speed work, but you can't empty the tank all the time, so this kind of threshold stuff, high-end critical velocity, is good endurance strength work, and uh, you're still operating at a pretty high level, but you're still operating with good smooth running form, you're still, you're breathing hard, but you're not hyperventilating, you're not getting too out of control, and the lactate levels are kept uh, relatively constant, even with the short rests and the high volume. So it's about building your athlete and your fitness up rather than breaking them down. And for me, and uh, Coach Shandy and I developed all the training plans. Uh, Coach Shandy helped with co-developing all of our training plans, including our marathon training plans at Sage Running. We kind of view this as speed work for marathon runners, right? Uh, you do like 10 times a kilometer, uh, yeah, you could be lactate threshold training. It could be faster than half marathon pace, but you start to get down to 10K pace. You're like, what am I doing this workout for? Well, it's to be breathing hard. It's to get the legs moving faster than marathon pace, right? Quite a bit faster. And for you high school kids out there, maybe it's 20 seconds a mile slower than your 5K type of race pace. Maybe you haven't run a 10K. Definitely most people haven't run a 12K. It's kind of hard to project that exact pace, but you could kind of extrapolate it from your current 5k pace uh, on a flat course in, in good conditions like that. Uh, so that's kind of the idea between critical velocity training. Uh, again, you know, there's a lot of variations on the workouts you could do. Intervals with short rest, uh, mile repeats, kilometer repeats, like I said, or you could do even, there's a lot of timed interval fartlek. We won't call it true fartlek because it's not out in the woods speed play between random uh, things like trees, but maybe you're doing three minute surges with a, a minute and a half off, or even you know two minutes on, one minute off, right? Where you're hitting uh, a pretty high heart rate and you're getting these heart rate spikes and values, and as the workout progresses, it kind of increases up, right? The heart rate could be spiking 92% of maximum, maybe 93%, I don't know, but it starts at 88%. Whereas if it was a, a flat out, just a tempo run, a 20 minute Jack Daniels style, standard tempo run, maybe you're only at 88%, right? 89% of max heart rate value. And again, maximum heart rate, it's hard unless you know exactly what 100% of your maximum heart rate is, it's gonna be kind of hard to judge. So you go by pace, you go by perceived effort, you go by lactate values, things like that. Uh, that's kind of the, the details. The, the devil's in the details with these types of workouts and this type of training, but it does have a lot of value for all sorts of distance runners, whether you're middle distance runner, 800 meter, 1500 meter, mile specialist, 3K, 5K, or you're a marathon or ultra marathon runner, 
There's a lot of benefits to doing workouts around the critical velocity or high end <laughs> lactate threshold training, right? It's in between VO2 max and lactate threshold essentially on the pace intensity spectrum. And I, you know, I was always doing preseason kilometer repeats. I call them pre VO2 max workouts because in the summer before cross country season in college, I'd like, I'm going to go to the track. I'm going to do some 400 meter repeats. And just for leg turnover, running economy, those are more Daniel's reps. But I'd also do eight times a thousand with a minute, minute and a half rest. And I'd kind of do it not all out, not fast as possible average, not VO2 max, not true stuff like that. But I'd kind of do it more relaxed, maybe more negative split type of workout where the kilometer splits come down. And it would be maybe even a little slower than 10K pace, which is that critical velocity, 12K to 15K race pace for a lot of people. Uh, again, thanks so much for your support on here. Thanks to Patreon supporters for really making these videos possible. Again, a uh, final business plug gift idea, uh, Running for the Hansons, the self-published memoir that I wrote when I was in the Hansons Brooks Elite Marathon Post-Collegiate Training Distance Project. It's kind of inspired by like Running with the Buffalo's I idea. I will warn you, it does have some expletives in it. I believe it was geared for younger audiences, immature audiences, let's run.com message board audiences. It was how I felt at the time in my turbulent 20s, uh, training with Olympians like Brian Sell, Desi Linden, uh, a lot of my teammates that ran 214, 215, and it kind of chronicles the day-to-day -day life of living the dream out there in Michigan, working in the shoe stores, but also training 150 miles a week, and training for the Boston Marathon uh, that year in 2010, the 2010 Boston Marathon, you can kind of see our detailed training lead up for that race, as well as just the lifestyle. And, you know, I'll admit it's not written very well. It's got typos in it. It was self-published. You could find it on Amazon, though, Running for the Hansons. Uh, and it's how I felt at the time. A lot of my uh, immaturity has not changed over the years. Uh, but definitely, you know, if you're looking for a gift idea, uh, there's one. And uh, thanks so much for your support on here, though. Uh, enough plugs for now. Really appreciate it. Hope your running's going well. Uh, be sure to comment below with any questions uh, on this type of video. There are going to be more training talks as well as more OTQ marathon training. Training for the Houston Marathon in six weeks, 218 or better, hopefully. Uh, thank you again from the bottom of my heart. Hope you're doing well. Stay tuned for more.